Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about being rejected. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, as a software engineer, have you ever been surprised when you were rejected from a tech interview? Well, I'll let you know when it happens, so no. I'm joking, of course I've been rejected from companies. Uh, no, I've never been surprised uh, that I've been rejected from like a, you know, a, an interview or something like that. The reason why is because I don't assume some, uh, this is sort of the, it's the, it's the thing you sort of learn after a while of working and it's actually funny because when I was a junior I was convinced that there was this universal truth for what a good software developer looks like and, and like that everybody's very competent in IT and so forth which is actually funny because that realization that that is so naive that it's hilarious makes me be it makes me very scared of other industries if we're so incompetent in IT if there if, if there's so many incompetent people in IT imagine how the medical industry looks or you know airplanes stuff like that um, I can only imagine what our world would look like if we only had very very high characters uh, high character and high intellect uh, and uh, productive people imagine that but since we're living in the real world I very quickly f figured out that uh, you could be the in theory the best software developer ever at something and that doesn't really matter because the people who are interviewing you are incompetent that's one scenario another one is that they give you a test where you're not really good at that specific test I've been rejected from a company because I got too, okay, there was there's this like l really weird I always find real uh, logic test which shows like a sequence of dots on a grid and how they move, and you're supposed to pick the next logical character, next logical step in the sequence. And they basically like I passed the coding interview. All the people loved me basically as far as I understood, uh, and. Like I passed the architects, like they had like four or five steps and shit like that in the interviewing process. They passed everything else, but that I did not pass, and therefore, no, sorry. And I kind of went on, thing with my, I kind of just went on from there because I wasn't really, I wasn't really surprised because it's an idiotic test. There is no, like, I mean, and in another company, like the actually that's the one that I'm working right now at. I had a very similar. Uh, a similar exercise where I know for a fact that I failed that horrendously because the timer started so quickly that I didn't actually and I actually started clicking things wrong and I realized after the test that I had probably I had misunderstood the exercise and I probably did everything wrong but I still got the job. Uh, been in companies where I was credited or like commended on doing such a nice personal interview and like being so you know sociable and so forth and so forth and they offered me a job uh, very quickly uh, and in another company I was basically told that I'm not a good culture fit because I seem to have social issues that w company by the by was a company where they put me in a room with this random dude when I asked to talk to one of the uh, team members I'm gonna have in the company they completely ignored that part just took a random person that person basically didn't know anything about coding and just gave me a rundown of the history of the company and the business increase over the last 10 years and stuff and I like but I w actually wanted to talk to a software developer so I kind of know what your stack is and that's really not what's happening here so I just went on like I mean I got rejected and that didn't really matter because I had already decided to not work for that company and guys you will find that the evaluation process when it comes to software development like the interviews and so forth they are done by flawed people in an industry where more than half of the people working in that industry 
don't actually know what uh, like a, what a binary number is. Like they have no idea what any of this does. It's just basically magic. But that's how it works. So be it's not really surprising to me uh, to be rejected from like uh, an interviewing process because you don't know what type of person is going to review your tests or who is going to be in the interview and what type of value systems they have you can only do as well as you can and that's why I tell people that the best thing for you if you want to stack the deck in your favor is to make sure that you know your fundamentals make sure that you have at least a decent understanding of algorithms and data structures and so forth because unfortunately even though you're never ever 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 gonna use that a lot of companies think that that's a good idea to evaluate if somebody's good or not. And if you can solve those sorts of problems, that's like, you know, it's like getting your degree so that you can actually go in and do the actual work. Uh, it's 50-50 usually, which approach they like to use. And then the last thing is to have good social skills, to be able to talk, talk with passion, speak in, in an engaging fashion and connect and make a connection with people in the interviewing process. If you can do all these things, then you've done all you can. And the rest is basically down to luck and what type of people you're dealing with uh, and like how, what their value system is, because you have to kind of remember guys, the uh, when you're applying to, you can apply to three different software companies and there are different people working in each each of them and they all have varying degrees of perspectives that's actually one of the reasons why at my com my company that I work at uh, we have an interviewing process where we crowdsource reviewing tests which makes the whole thing extremely unfair of course but basically you know we have the second uh, second opinion rule where you know if I interview or rather if I do a code review for a test and I say no I don't think that this is a good candidate then the recruiters or whoever is you know trying to get that person into the company can I just tell them you go and get a second opinion and if everybody's saying that yeah no this is probably not a good person then yeah we're gonna go with the democracy that person might be really really good I have no idea but all I know is that I need some type of framework for deciding whether or not I'm gonna hire this person or not and at some point just as in school we have to say that because we can always make things harder if we, twi we wiggle our perspective on and kind of inject our own values just as we can always make it easier and if you don't have any rule like if there's no like minimum required point for passing a test then why have the test then you might as well just ask people to do the test and then pass everybody regardless of how well they do and unfortunately there is no real way as I like to say the best uh, the best evaluation process in the world is the gut feeling of a senior software developer and that is something that we do actually have and we stack our bets even further to be fair towards the candidates and making sure that we don't like get into the habit of having just one person who like has final say on everything we crowdsource it to other seniors so that a group of seniors can make an informed decision and that way we at the very least believe that uh, it's the fairest thing to everybody so what I want you to take away from this is that uh, of course I've been rejected from work or different jobs uh, in IT and I've never really been surprised at that it's happened usually because when I've gotten rejected it is due to the fact that I already kind of felt that it was not going that well in the interview and often that is down to as I said the fact that you don't control the interviewing process it can be really good or it can be really shit there's no way for you to know and the reality is that if you treat the interviewing process as some type of measurement just in general how of how good you are you have to make sure that you see a pattern if you get rejected from every single company then the problem is probably you but if you're getting rejected from one or two out of most then the problem is them probably or bad luck or something like that and on average I have found that the ratio to like I think I've been rejected from one or two companies over the, all the years that I've been working now and practically everybody else has offered me the position so I don't really feel all that bad over the fact that uh, like there's one or two companies there who 
either felt that I was a bad fit or maybe just didn't really have a good understanding of who they were saying no to. I don't know, but it doesn't really matter because there's more jobs out there. Have a great day.